Hello everybody, Josh12 back here again with another video and I'm back with another DCCW premiere episode review. Yes, I'm here to give you my official review for DC's Legends of Tomorrow Season 2, Episode 1, titled Out of Time. But of course, if you've not seen the latest premiere of Legends Season 2, then I suggest you go check it out because this review may contain spoilers. But that being said, let's get into the newest episode of CW's and DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Now, overall, I didn't really stay up to date with Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow, a lot like Supergirl, was kind of a TV show I started off reviewing, but then stopped. And just, it was mostly due to the fact that I had more fun binge watching on these shows rather than watching them week to week like I do Flash and Arrow. However, Supergirl... Uh, uh, was very hard to watch. Legends, at a certain point in time, I want to say like once it reached its mid-season, it kind of got very difficult to watch as well. And overall, as a whole, I actually like Legends of Tomorrow Season 1. I think there was a lot of really cool niche markets that they were able to attack, and I like what they did. However, if there's something that really bugs me is the fact that it's very I'm very nitpicky when it comes to, I guess you can say nip DC content, but more than just DC content, period pieces. I'm a big buff when it comes to period pieces, period dramas and stuff like that, and even though this is a fantasy, science fiction, superhero setting, I just, it always bugs me when you have a show with time travelers, they're going to go in time, do a whole bunch of things, and it, I know like new waivers like this because it kind of reminds them of other shows like that, like Doctor Who or whatever and stuff like that, but I'm not a big fan of that kind of content because I like period dramas and I like how time and history plays out the way it should be rather than having opportunities to change it and and just when you have a budget and a specific rating that CW and Legends has it's very difficult to do the kind of stuff you would like to see happen and, and done more seriously or dramatic so those are kind of like the qualms I have with Legends as a whole when they go back in time however this episode definitely takes place after the whole giant debacle after the whole uh, Vandal Savage debacle, meeting up with Justice Society, and ironically enough, the season premiere has nothing to do with Justice Society. I find it funny that the big season two of Legends, the big hype was Justice Society, Justice Society, DC's gonna do Justice Society, we're gonna get this shit rolling, and you know what? You better wait a long time, folks, because, spoilers, you don't get to see any legitimate Justice Society members until the fucking ending of the actual episode, and that really bugs the living crap out of me. For me personally, I hate it when shows and seasons don't connect well between each other, because even though there is a significant time in between each season, I never like it when one story ends and then sets up another story, and then when you pick it up on the next season, it completely doesn't, you know, acknowledge the events of where you left off. And that's what this premiere does. It kind of starts off with Oliver Queen kind of like finding the legends and trying to like set them on their new path or whatever, which I guess is pretty cool. I mean, like, it's always nice to see Stephen Amell in these kind of programs and stuff, and... It's cool to see that happen, especially considering that, you know, he had a lot of good portions in Season 1, and I think he does a pretty good job with these DC programs, and it, it was cool to see him a part of it. But regarding disregarding any of that, we get to see the new characters, which is Dr. Haywood, and it just, I don't know, it just didn't really feel relevant. It kind of just goes over your head once you discover that the entire episode you watch is just flashbacks of another character's narration, which is Rory's. And it's just, who really cares? Like, honestly, it just really bugged me that instead of like getting on an actual path, setting up events for the rest of the season, finding a common thread, and just going on that, 
and just going full on Justice Society. Let's get all Golden Age DC, folks. I mean, like, this is the perfect show and opportunity to go full on Golden Age DC, and they don't really do that. They kind of just do what they did in Season 1, which is, hey, let's go back in the past and do cool things. Let's, like, have fun, like, showing off her technology. Sarah Lance, have sex with, like, every single female person. You know, fucking... Uh, Firestorm, do stuff, Ray Palmer, say something funny, basically be Superman, but not really Superman, and kind of combine it with Spider-Man, yeah, that, do that, and just go crazy, and like, fucking Rip Hunter, you bitch about it, but you never really do anything, because you're, you're kind of a puss, and that's basically what happens, and it just, it really bugged me, it, it is what it is, but regardless of any of that, let me start off with my positives, my positives has to be the character lineup we got, I love the characters. I love the actors. Victor Garber kills it on this program. He is definitely the best actor on the show, and he gets top billing for a reason. He is awesome. Brandon Routh as Ray Palmer kills it. He was awesome in season one. I feel like he was very underrated as a character, and I think he's awesome in season two so far. Rory, it's cool to see him do his thing, and, um, you know, Firestorm is always really cool and interesting visually. And so on and so forth. And I and I have to admit, I do like the exclusion of certain characters from season one. Uh, however, I will admit, I'm not a big fan of Captain Cold not being part of the show anymore. It sucks. I mean, granted, with DC's comic book logic, I'm pretty sure they can bring it back for certain episodes. And hell, for all we know, bring it back in real life again. But it does suck, as for now, that we have to deal with a show that doesn't have a snart in it. I mean, come on. I mean, Captain Code, as cheesy of a character he is, he's so freaking good, and not to have him sucks. However, with that being said, Hawkgirl and Hawkman don't really care. I honestly never really liked them in Season 1. As much as, as, much as it is baffling, hilariously uh, depressing how attractive uh, Renee is, I just don't care about her, and I don't care about Carter. I just really don't. I know they might be relevant in later seasons, or maybe in future projects over at CW, considering that uh, back in Season 1, spoilers, they had this whole uh, idea of a Thanagar war coming, so they might be relevant in future seasons or storylines, but as it is, I'm okay with them being gone. I'm alright. With the exception of Captain Cold, I'm pretty much okay with the new with the lineup we have now, and the actors kill it. Secondly, the visuals. The visuals kick fucking ass on Legends. If there's something to really commend and just do a gigantic uh, applause for CW, is being really smart and, consi and consistent with the budgets of every program, which is crazy considering that you would think in this new year that it would be very difficult for all the CW programs to be as consistent as they are, considering that, you know, Arrow is going for its dozen, dozens fucking season, Flash is going on three years now, Legends is going for another round, and now we got Supergirl joining in, and Supergirl being the kind of characters that they are definitely needs a lot of CGI visual effects and money. So it's really crazy to see that even with a show that is effects heavy, still has the abilities to do some serious effects in CGI, and I really appreciate that, and I really enjoy that stuff. Moving off of that, the comedy was pretty good. I feel like Legends at this point in time is pretty much just a show that, as a comic book guy or a comic book geek, you just... You don't really take serious as much as, like, maybe The Flash or Arrow or even Supergirl at a certain, uh, you know, perspective. It's just a show... You sit back, you relax, you chill, you turn your brain off, and you put on your geek hat, and you fucking live it. You're fucking live it, and that's all you do. And that's pretty much the best part about Legends of Tomorrow. It doesn't take itself too seriously, and it's just a fun ride. But with that being said and done, let's move off of that and get into major negatives I had with the episode. Number one, the period piece dramas. Once again, going in the past, fucking up shit, using your powers and technology really bugs me, but it is what it is. Um, other things, Albert Einstein, there's a big t plot idea, uh, or device rather, that Albert Einstein kind of plays a big part of, and it's just like, I don't know how, they, how CW and DC were capable of doing it, but they were able to take Albert Einstein, of all people, 
and not really use him to being like maybe an important character in a story. No, he's just like a jizz bet. He's just a jizz bucket. That's all he really is. So that was interesting. Also, not really big fan of that. We also got the return of Damian Dark and Reverse Flash, which I thought was interesting. And as much as I like the actors, I really find no point in them being a part of Legends. I mean, we did get Damian Dark in Season 1, which was cool. But in Season 2, it's like, do we really need, like, previously supposed villains? Like, where's the newcomers? Like, let's get some new villains in here that we don't really have a chance to ever get to see. Also, on a side note, uh, Sarah Lance. I wasn't really a big fan of Katie Lotz's character in, in the first episode of this new season. I mean, overall, there's n there's nothing to take away from Katie Lotz other than the fact that she kills it, she's awesome, she kicks ass, and she's hot as hell. Those are the aspects you take away from a Katie Lotz Sarah Lance. She is definitively the true Black Canary in, in all respects. However, I just find it odd that like DC, and I guess CW to a certain extent, but mostly DC in, in recent years have find it necessary to make their female superhero characters a certain way, which I don't know why that is. I, I guess it's their attempt to like make them more appropriate for like new waivers of geek fans or comic book guys and you know like new, uh, like millennials and stuff. And it's just, I don't really buy into it. Like I get it, Katie Lotz is hot, she's fun, but, like, seriously, like, she's basically, like, Stephen Amell fucking on this show. It's, like, fu fucking every chick in history and time. And it's, like, yeah, that's funny, but it's, like, it's so obvious as a ploy just to make, uh, just to, it's, like, a, a ploy slash banner just to make all viewers be, like, uh, have the perspective of, like, this is female superheroes in DC. We are bisexual. We kick ass and we do whatever we want. We have fucking sex with everybody because we're, you know, all female power millennials. We got to respect that millennial shit. You, if you don't know what you are, it's okay to be bi. It's okay to be whatever. Fucking choose it right now and just be it. And it's just, I don't buy into that shit. I feel like there's history and then there's legacy and then there's just supporting a specific group just for the sake of it, and I just, I don't really buy into that, so, overall, it is what, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, there's no, nothing wrong with having a bisexual superhero, or even a gay superhero, but if you really want to go crazy, CW or DC, with these kind of antics, I suggest, how about you try it with an actual, like, characters that design to be that, like, I don't know, like, maybe Midnighter, or fucking Mr. Terrific, like, you got Mr. Terrific, and you already have, you know, use for him, and you got, like, Midnighter. Midnighter. Like, how about you do Midnighter? He's fucking kicks ass, he's a badass, and he's super fucking gay. How about you fucking use him and just let him be a poster child instead of, you know, bringing in the, the Black Canary debacle all over again with Sarah Lance and... I don't know. It just... It, it bugged me. It's nothing really crazy. It's more like a nitpick, but it, it just... It kind of bugged me. Also, on a side note, once again... The, the Justice League Society, the Justice Society, rather, leaguers we get to see. Not really a big fan of the way they look or how they present themselves. Uh, once again, I just wish CW can just have this campy, silly side to it instead of trying to make their characters look new wavy. It just, I don't really buy it. And once again, just Legends of Tomorrow should stick to future episodes. I don't like the past stuff. I really like the future episodes. Back in Season 1... My least favorite episodes are the ones when they go back in the past. Oh, we're back in the 60s. We're back in the 40s or whatever. I wasn't a big fan of those episodes. The episodes I were a fan of are the future episodes. Like when they go to Rip Hunter's time. When they go see the Time Masters. When they had to, spoilers, go to Star City in the future and see this apocalyptic uh, Green Arrow universe. The Arrowverse in the future. Like that was some serious hardcore shit that I would like to see more of. And with that, you could do so many different things with the show. Instead of doing the easy stuff, like, how oh, let's go and see Albert Einstein. That's so hacky. That's hack writing. Oh, let's go see Brandon Routh run away from a dinosaur, Jurassic Park style. That's so hacky. Like, how about you fucking do something really cool like you did with the Arrow episode last season 
and fucking do Batman Beyond. How about that? Like, yeah, sure, they can't do Batman. They can't. Because the Batman TV rights are all screwed up with Fox and Warner Brothers, and Batman is, you know, incorporated in the movies and will always be a part of the movies. However... What about Batman Beyond? How about I don't I don't think anybody's ever going to do Terry McGinnis anytime soon and what other DC program deals with future stuff? Fucking Flash and Legends. So how about fucking do a Batman Beyond episode with Terry McGinnis? I mean like it the, the fucking the show writes itself. Why not do that stuff? But no, we have to go back to the 40s. We got to help out Albert Einstein and stop the Nazis. It's like enough of the Nazis. We get it. We get it. Enough of Damian Dark and Reverse Flash. We get it. They're played out at this point. Let's see some new villains. Let's see some new characters. Let's focus on Justice Society. But with that being said, and done, I'm pretty sure we will at certain points in the season. But that's been my personal thoughts on it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. My final verdict for the season 2 premiere of uh, DC's Legends of Tomorrow has to be a solid... 7.5 out of 10. I enjoyed myself. I think as cheesy and campy uh, most of this program can be, you do have a fun time watching. You do have an enjoyment. And I do appreciate most Easter eggs and references they do accomplish. And once again, the actors, the cast, just the overall enjoyment is just awesome. I just have a good ride all the way through. But for the most part, I just wish that the program would focus less on hacky, like, time travel bullshit and just go to the future and deal with some serious shit. You know, but it is what it is. We'll see what happens with the rest of the season. As it seems to be playing out, they'll be focusing on some serious Justice Society antics and missions, so we'll see what happens. But overall, let me know what you think in the comment section below of the season 2 premiere of Legends of Tomorrow, and of course my personal thoughts on it. And of course, with that being said and done, uh, I will not be reviewing the rest of the season. Uh, possibly here and there I might end up doing some stuff, maybe if there's time in the week, but for the most part, this will be my last review for Legends of Tomorrow. I hope you guys enjoyed, and remember to comment below and let me know what you personally think. But this has been my subjective opinion, and of course, shameless plug time! Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh12. Subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And this has been Josh12.